Okay, we going? I think so, yeah. Okay, it's Baron, Dodger, the old Rich McQueen. I need to be removed from this house of torture in Sadlia, New South Wales. I'm being abused and neglected and financially oppressed as a disabled person. I can't go to police. They refuse to take a statement. They restrict my phone so I can't speak to anyone on it. Um, I can't call out. The authorities and the authorities are as who is doing it, monitor and intercept my emails. They interfere with my computer and electronically harass, intimidate, stalk and surveil me. They plant evidence. They remove the facts that I need to fight this battle, which is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, which has caused death. I killed myself five years ago from the very same family violence and financial control that is affecting me now. I was revived from certain death. That's why I've got the brain injury. I'm horribly financially abused by Alex A. Boss and Baba Rashid from Upscale Care and Aligned Community Care, where I am, um, where I am um, housed in this house. They have evicted me for not paying rent. They expected me to pay $300 a week out of my less than $400 a week pension. Not a sustainable situation when you've got a therapy dog. You've got to buy food. I have bills like everyone else. I signed it under coercion of being in a psychiatric ward. They wouldn't release me after a whole month without signing it and they blocked other providers from providing me reasonable accommodation. I suffer from schizophrenia and a brain impairment and unmedicated ADHD. I have profound and damning evidence of surveillance inside the house, which is monitoring me and commenting by V2K audio harassment inside the house on things I do and baiting me with accusations, false accusations, pedophile, rapist, extortionist, we fucking hate you, kill yourself. That's what the voices say. And I reject any of those things and they've never been tested in a court and I've never been in court, apart from a corrupt magistrate who ruled that um, I should never return to Victoria, otherwise I'll be arrested and I live in exile in New South Wales. I'm a political displaced refugee and asylum seeker in the democracy that I am a citizen in. It couldn't be more dire. This house where I am is a torture chamber. I can't go anywhere. I have no car. The authorities and Aligned Community Care have suspended all help. I get no one coming to my house. I get no support workers. I get no psychology. Ten hospitalizations, ten hospitalizations in three years. I still have no psychologist, no psychiatrist, no GP, no drug and alcohol counsellor, no finance counsellor, no legal help, no advocate. Disability Advocates New South Wales have flat out blacklisted me like the rest of the fucking world. Why? Because they're informed by a false narrative from who? The fucking authorities. And as we know, authorities are fucking corrupt. I'm fucking angry. What, um, that's, oh, now that I have evidence of gang stalking. That's where paid government contractors or independent contractors not associated with the government are sent into the community in order to abuse, harass, neglect, even violently attack me which happened inside Werribee Mercy Hospital, the hospital and the police knew about. This is a violent conspiracy. It is a murderous conspiracy and it's already fucking killed me once and they are doing it again with a sustained neglect, abuse, persecution, financial destruction and by humiliating me, by allowing me to rant on YouTube and everyone just plays into the narrative that I'm mad. You know what's mad? Fucking society's mad. Wait on. They're, they're paid to harass and attack me. They um, get me in the street. They intimidate me online. 
they intimidate me through grinder, through a gay hooker perhaps. Um, I, I need to get away from this fucking torture chamber in Sadler in New South Wales. Crystal has been sick and they've weaponized her illness against me as a political pawn in order to distress, harass and push me to the fucking edge and I'm fucking right on the edge. Now, I need money. I have a $100,000 NDIS plan and I'm unable to use it. Cal Graham at the NDIS blocks other providers from helping me when Alliance already severed the contract. I can't fire Alex A. Boss from Upscale Care. He's NDIS appointed. What does it mean when someone's contracted to an appointment? They're paid. What are they paid to do? They're paid to financially abuse me and to keep me in the poverty of which I am accustomed for many fucking years, despite being owed work cover, insurances, my business was destroyed, a brain injury. These are egregious human rights violations and I've got an appeal at the ONHCR International Criminal Human Rights Court. You wouldn't read about it. I've got a letter from the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Thanks, you gutless fucking weasel, for neglecting to act in the severe fucking persecution, financial destruction and conspiracy that I'm involved in. I'm banned in Africa. The, uh, uh, um, your phone's just gone up. Can you just start the, yeah, just keep, keep it going. The Australian Human Rights Commission has rejected to, to investigate my documented human rights abuses by an NDIS worker and the NDIS refused still to investigate it. The NDIS have refused accountability in looking at my former partner. A simple acknowledgement the relationship existed. It doesn't exist. Every politician's on it, every lawyer's on it, and every fucking cop, oink oink, thanks for your fucking 80 grand to put up with the likes of me every fucking time I'm pushed to the edge and you're fucking sent to my house to fucking lock me away in asylum. They're the very people causing my illness and then they persecute me for having one. The cops are fucking cowards. And I tell you what, there's a dog here. And I tell you what, um, I'm just gonna go the rest of this letter. Uh, I've got um, no GP, no drug and alcohol, no financial support, no legal help. They, the NDIS and my providers are supposed to report abuse and neglect. Instead, they're actively participating in my financial persecution and causing the abuse and neglect. I live under family violence of my former partner, an ASIO agent no less, Steve Isonides. The government has his back. He's threatened to kill my dog. Well, he's not going to have to. If they kill me first, at least she'll get the help she needs, or if the government does it for him. I've been unable to get a lawyer. Legal Aid have banned me. The Ombudsman refuses future correspondence. I'm being harassed with audio in my house, baiting me, schizo faggot, we fucking hate you, kill you, pedo, it's all fucking there, and I've got evidence of it. The only thing is, I can't record it because the technology uses subsonic harassment, and it's microwave frequencies. I've outlined all that on my website. I've been character assassinated. I've been tortured with systemic politicised politicized neglect. Every politician is in on it. Every lawyer. I died from this already. Don't you see what you're doing to me? I'm a journalist and a writer and an artist and an advocate. I've got a doctorate in narrative inquiry and post-humanism with young people and quantum intelligence, post-human futures. I've spoken in Parliament House. They know who I am. All over the country, on local, state, federal, even international audiences. Philosophy, when you mean do a doctor of philosophy, means to do no harm. And I don't wish harm on anyone. The very same way that harm happens to me every single minute of every single day by every single person I know. That's what a scapegoat is. Now, and they're doing it all while protecting an ASIO agent. I was never paid work cover, never paid insurances, my business destroyed. It's been going for 30 years since my first autobiography, Recovered Not Cured A Journey Through Schizophrenia, was published by Alan Unwin, who exploited me, and the Herald Sun defamed me, and The Age illegally fired me. That was the first detriment and I've never ever had a lawyer or legal representative from that time. This is 
lies and corruption. It's a conspiracy. And as I said, I killed myself to escape it five years ago and I was revived to a whitewashing of that tragedy, the hospital and all involved, including the Ombudsman. And then no one has stood up for me. I can't believe it. My carers are my abusers. The NDIS are proven to be corrupt. Bill, thank you very much, fucking Bill Shorten. If I even mention you all go to jail, are corrupt. I've got a $100,000 plan I can't use. My family have forsaken me. Mum says, you're on drugs. You've got to pay rent. Well, if I've got to pay rent, someone's got to pay work cover. Someone's got to pay this. There's other obligations that are supposed to occur in society. Um, it's an unsustainable life. And because of the abuse, shoot me. I've used drugs. I don't have my ADHD script. They've rejected that from me ever since the first time I was hospitalised. I live in exile in New South Wales. And there's a local guy threatening to come over to my house and infect me with HIV positive blood. What a delight. What a fucking delight when I tried to call police. And then they came to the door and grievously attacked it and intimidated me until I told them to fuck off, which is what they wanted. That is grievous. Uh, and also, um, I had a HIV scare last week. Um, sue me, I have sex. And the time has passed for that treatment to stop the infection. Alex Abos, Baba Rashid were my contact people. They've let the time pass. I could be HIV positive. That's just not neglect. That is grievous criminal neglect. My family's blacklisted me and they keep me financially abused by protecting us knees and then blame me for doing drugs, which is the result of the abuse they condone. Every political party is on it, every politician, every public service official, every lawyer. My appeals at UNHCR fell on deaf ears. The voices in the head are doing my fucking head in and I find it abhorrent and deny all accusations of those. Let's test it in a court, will we? You know, I signed the lease under the distress of being imprisoned in the hospital, so it's not a legal lease anyway. Cal Graham, my contact person at the NDS, blocks other providers, despite this one severing contact. She tells them they won't be paid. So they can't be paid and they don't help me. I have no car or transport. My dog, Crystal, has possibly got a, a urinary tract infection, ear infection, or a, um, or a uterus infection. Um, she needs vet care. Please, can someone out there help me? I need $200 just so I can use my um, afterpay to get in a car so I can drive to a vet hospital with a total absence and obliteration of care. My pay ID, and I'll tell it to you now, is the same as my phone number, and you can ring me, but the phone doesn't work. 0433 514 524. I'll say it again. 0433 514 524. The Prime Minister didn't even intervene. I've got a letter for him. Neither did Mark Draces. I'm banned in Africa. My human rights abuses are documented and left uninvestigated. It's so cruel what they're doing to me and they're laughing at me and Steve Isonides is laughing all the way to the bank. You can't ignore me forever, or maybe you can because I'll be dead by suicide of neglect. That's not my mental illness killing me. That's a conspiracy to murder. That's what that is. And I need to get out of here. If I stay, I'm gonna die. My dog is getting sick. To hold this over an innocent animal is beyond morally indefensible. Even if you wanted to harm me, don't harm my fucking dog. My mum won't buy me a packet of smokes, let alone fight for justice for me. Five years since a fatal injury and she tells me to get over it. It's a deplorable situation. What a fucking horror show for me. How shameful of the world, you know? It's not my shame to have. It's all of yours. It's narcissistic abuse. I'm a sexual abuse survivor. My sexual redress was never paid by DSS. Justice Ray Griggs and DSS Spencer won't get back to me. It's conspiracy. It's a conspiracy to fucking murder. And I am a targeted individual of the Australian government. That is my fucking statement. Please help me, my Pay IDs 0433 514 524. Sorry for being upset. Sorry for being cranky. It's been a difficult ride.